Herzlich willkommen beim 35. Internationalen Dokumentarfilmfestival München, dem DocFest. Herzlich willkommen bei DocFest München at Home 21, unserem Online-Festival. Mein Name ist Ludwig Sporrer, ich bin einer der Programmer des DocFests und Moderator. Und ich freue mich sehr, heute in unserer Reihe DocGuest Canada in der internationalen Bewährung den Film ähm, Le Libre, The Free Ones von Nicola Levesque äh, zu präsentieren. Und ich bin sehr stolz, I'm very proud that we have the director with us. Hello Nicola, how are you? Hi, hi, I'm very good. Thank you. Yeah, it's a great pleasure for me uh, to see you. I guess the first time I saw a film of you was at the Kaliber 35 Film Festival with your first short film, uh, In Guns We Trust. And yeah. Yeah, and it's great to see you seven years or eight years after that with your new, <laughs> one, a new film, Le Libre. Yeah. It's really a great cinematic uh, documentary and we're very proud that we can um, uh, present the international premiere of your film. Um, For me, it's also a film about masculinity in a, a neoliberal age. Do you agree on this? Uh, yeah, yeah, I could say yes. It's um, <clears throat> you know, um, I, I'm, I'm the, the well where the the film takes place. It's in a small town, and it's the, the town where I grew up. It's where I'm from. I didn't know it was existing. This factory where we uh, help these people, but uh, I, it's it's a small town where. Um, Uh, you always look good if you're a tough hockey player, kind of, and uh, and uh, and I was always like uh, far from that kind of feeling. Um, I was I was a, really like a sports guy, but much more like uh, swimming sports and stuff like that. And uh, but I was always um, uh, really interested, or like I was very curious about. Um, why people act like this and, and like all these worlds of masculinity were always interesting to me. And, and I had access to them, to them pretty young. Like, like I was saying, like lots of my friends were tough hockey players and a lot were, um, um, uh, how could I say this in English? Uh, uh, showing how, who they are like that. And um, I worked a lot on my daddy's farm. Uh, he, he's, um, He's a, a fruits and vegetables producer, and uh, and I, I worked a lot with uh, groups of men, uh, and I was always interested in that. And I knew that in this factory there, there are a couple of women working there, and some are in the film. But uh, I was really interested in some characters that were trying to uh, regulate their um, violent tendencies and. We have a, there is a scene in the film like that, that where we have access to these people, like they're opening up a bit more. But yes, I agree with that. Yeah. And how do you um, find this project? Uh, do you know that this project, is this a very special project in your hometown or do you can find it all over Canada? Uh, well, yeah, there's uh, 53 companies, uh, just in the uh, province of Quebec, um, there are 53 Uh, they're not all factories, you know, they could be a farm, it could be uh, a tissue factory. I mean, this is a wood factory and we're in a small region that a lot of, uh, the region was developed by the uh, forest industry a lot. Uh, lots of people work in the forest industry. So that's why in this factory, it's all about second and third uh, transformation of the wood. And, um, you know, I learned about this factory because uh, in life I, uh, I'm a director and I, uh, I um, sometimes do contracts so I have to, uh, to um, people ask you to do a film about something and it's not always a film for cinema that sometimes it's for corporate uh, use or our publicities so sometimes I do things like that and this factory needed a communication video to say who they are and what I'm sorry and what they do And uh, so I was hired as a director of photography on, on, a, on a small <laughs> corporate contract and I, it was in there and I was like, oh wow, this factory is real, it works for real. And I just, I just fall in love with the place. But at that time, I didn't have the uh, uh, maturity to make a feature film, I think. It was like in 2012, just before I, I got up in Guns We Trust. And um, 
But uh, with the uh, National Film Board of Canada, uh, I did a short film it's called Interview with a Free Man. And it's a very short film of six minutes where I'm just, uh, where some people in this factory, they are making some job interviews. And during the film, you understand that um, uh, they're practicing interviews. It's not real ones. And then you understand who they are, why we're here and stuff like that. And it's a six minute film. And when I did that, the the, the board of, the, of directors of the company, they trusted me and, and me and, and the presence of, of a filming crew inside. So then I asked them to do a feature film about somebody who's coming out from, uh, from a prison, could be federal or provincial. And I wanted to follow them during the six months of their program. And that's how the idea came. Yeah, um, and uh, did you know uh, Alan, where is, uh, where is in the, uh, 2012, or do you met um, Alan uh, uh, in the phone? No. no, at that time, Alan didn't work there. He was, uh, he was somewhere else in his life. And uh, he's a guy who, I mean, in his past, he has a heavy past. He had problems with justice, and he became a social worker after that. And that's, and that's where he's working now. Uh, no, when I, Alain was working there since three years now, four years, I guess. So when I, when the board of directors accepted my presence and they literally gave me the key for, for the factory, I mean, I could go anywhere in that, inside the place. And, and then I met Alain and he just, uh, he wanted to know what I was doing there. And he was like, okay, it's okay for you to film me anytime with anybody if they want. And that was the easiest part. The, the, the most difficult was to, uh, speak with the inmates and to let them accept us in their world. I was very impressed by him because of his, he's so gentle and on the one hand and very strict on the other side and it's this perfect mixture, um, mixture. Uh, it's very great. It's, I guess uh, a lot of uh, men, um, um, he was very, uh, I, I was really impressed. <laughs> And yeah, yeah, uh, right. you have also yeah, really um, some um, some heroes in your film. Who did, uh, did you thought about it that uh, there will be some who won't get it uh, to six months, or was it clear that the, most of the people who do this program uh, will succeed? Uh, very good question. No, a lot uh, a lot of people don't succeed at the first try. Um, some will succeed at the second and third and the fourth try sometimes, yeah. And when they say don't succeed, that means they do something bad and they have to go back inside. So, and they have to wait till they have another um, occasion to get out and try to uh, respect their rehabilitation plan. Um, but, uh, well, you know, I didn't, I, I couldn't meet the, the, the characters before the filming for the only reason that in, in the law, you cannot meet the inmates one month before they get out. So even to ask the money to the uh, government to get the funding, um, I had to explain myself why I couldn't uh, m uh, let them know who are really the characters of the film. So, but with research, I could create some uh, typical characters or some characters that are probably uh, able to exist in this kind of film. And that worked. And, um, and when I met them, I couldn't know if there were, that's why I, I filmed the whole year, because when I started filming, uh, the first two ones abandoned, I, I mean, I lost them, I didn't know where they were, so I had to kind of restart with new characters, uh, their process, and I wanted to have this moment when the first day they get in the factory, and where we tell them, you do that, you're going to learn that, you have to do this, this, and this. I wanted to be with them when they, like, uh, receiving all the new <laughs> rules, and so, yes, I mean, like, the, the main characters, like Samuel and Pierrot, they, they go to the end. And, and, and for me, it was clear I wanted somebody who will finish the program. I didn't want to... It, 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 that's the only uh, writing that I, I, I did and I respected uh, till the end. It's like, I need somebody to finish the program at the end. And, and finishing the program doesn't mean, like, you're free already. You, you still have conditions and surveillance and stuff like that. But uh, yeah, that's it. I think I lost uh, to all with all the characters I, I was interested in, and I, I took time with them. Uh, maybe half didn't do it uh, till the end. Oh, thank you. And could you tell us a, a little bit about your cinematic approach? 
um, how yeah. you capture the atmosphere and um, yes, the yes. Uh, well, you know, I, uh, I I'm a, I'm very um, I'm very close to the frame. I, I really love framing, and uh, but I couldn't do the the camera myself because. There's a lot of relations with the characters you have to keep on. So if the camera has a problem, I, you know, I don't have time to fix that problem and lost this kind of relation I have with the character. So it was very necessary for me to have a, a, a DP with me and who could manage all that. Um, you know, it's, it's, it's a, a repetitive place and there's a lot of lines. And for me, composition is very important. Um, to just appreciate, uh, to 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 love what you see as a as a um, uh, as as a watcher of the film. I mean, you have to you have to love it, and you have to have time to travel in the image and 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 understand the moves. So, as it's a repetitive place, I was able to do some kind of mise en scène sometimes. Like, uh, okay, I know this person will go there, so I'm just going to ask them to do it uh, sideways. Or you know, just I was playing with. The, pe the characters' bodies in the space a lot. Okay, you go this way. Uh, so when I had time, you know, not just like listening to what's really going on, I could invent some kind of scenes. For me, it's not um, it's not cheating. It's just like uh, I accept to uh, uh, intervene in this kind of reality when I film. So I, I, I'm a lot with the DP, and I watch the the, the monitor a lot and uh, uh, the screens and. Um, and yes, I, I and I was I always wanted to be inside the factory. Finally, we got out a bit, and I also went very much. Out, I went to the house of the peoples, but we didn't keep this in the editing. But I mean, the factory was a place uh, where there was this kind of structure, and like you have rough wood and clean wood, and I wanted to try to play with that and the movements, uh, and, and we did a lot of uh, work in uh, sound design and uh, uh, how do you say when you make some noise, a bruitage, I don't know what's in English, but, uh, and, and yeah, so that's what I could say right now. For um, and you, you choose um, only to show them in the factory, in the, uh, the car or car parking lot, but you, or at the, the therapy, but you never went to the, the places where they, they, they sleep and... Uh, they I went, was... I went, but uh, it wasn't going in that movie. And I don't, I don't know why, maybe it was because just, um, it was like uh, moments that were harder to, uh, to make look good. Well, you know, we have a bit of Samuel that he's, he's setting his new car, he's going to his new place, he meets new people in the neighborhood. Uh, or you have Pierrot walking in the streets of the city, of the town. But uh, when uh, when I was filming at the people's place, it was always it didn't seem wow. It, it was just not interesting what I did for that film. So you know we cleared it out of the editing uh, soon enough. You know. Okay. Yeah. But it's a, a very good choice, and I also love your uh, your drone images. Uh, I don't like them always, but I think uh, the, uh, the way you, you introduced the film, uh, uh, I really liked. And, no, uh, thanks. And yeah, one uh, question. If I could, if yeah, I could say something about the drones, I just, I just, um, I always kind of, um, how do you say this in English, a kind of a méfiance. Um, I, I try not to use it or, um, or I get, uh, I know it's, it could be dangerous. It's very used a lot and sometimes it's, it's uh, annoying, but I was like, okay, if I use it, I just, I never want to see the horizon. It always has to be on the ground and, and that's the only moments I used it. It's like, okay, we see the stacks of woods, we see the snow, we see the, uh, the summer coming. It was a, it, it was a, yeah, it was a way to, to give the, uh, the person who watched film certain pause and that is still, uh, uh, fun to look at and you learn things in this shot even so yeah yeah sorry it's just, <laughs> no no, uh, no, no <laughs> not at all um and i was also liked is i don't know if, if it was intentional i guess uh we started the winter it's uh uh it's the canada we know and uh and then we go to the to spring and the summer the blue uh sky and uh 
uh, you know they will they will get it they will succeed and it's um, uh, also um, on the cinematic level very impressive the heavy snow yeah. in the beginning it's uh, Thank well, you very it, much. it nearly didn't work. I, it nearly didn't work because you know the snow was starting to melt, and uh, these two characters I talked to you about later, they they were like they were lost, and I was like, oh no! And then spring is coming really, really fast, and and I want to still keep this. Uh, and at the start, I wanted to start the filming in autumn, uh, in fall, but it uh, it just didn't work in in lots of uh, ways of the production. Um, uh, compromises, and so that's why we started in, in January. But uh, yeah, no, we we. I, I mean, I, it's it's uh, something really, uh, really part of my life here because where I live, it's like um, it's, it's like 500 kilometers north of Montreal. So it's, it, we we have a lot of snow, and it's, winter is long. You know, I mean, it's you have like four or five months of snow, and you can ski all that time, and. But, and it's minus 30 degrees and, and in summer it's uh, 30 degrees and, and so I want to still, you know, show that in that film. So, and you know, we see them sometimes when they're cold and when they're super hot and yeah. that's it. Yeah, and um, uh, to, to talk about the therapy and um, um, we hear a lot about evaluation uh, and uh, to become better, better person uh, way. Do, do you evaluate your per yourself too now? Oh, if if uh, you mean if I saw myself in that? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Well, well, you know, you, you know this violent therapy thing. I mean, it's um, even if you, if you even think I don't need that in life. I mean, it spoke to me. You know, just to uh, take time to think about what we think, what we what we want to say, and it's uh, um, how could I say? Um, I'm I'm a father too. I have children, and <laughs> sometimes it's easy to just say, "Stop it!" And and you know, it's so well. You know, in each uh, film I do, this is for sure that I discover more about myself, and I, I, I and I confront myself to situations that I that I, I don't live in, that are far from from my my life. And you know, it's it's very interesting these these therapies. I mean, for me, it could be an, another film uh, because it's another place where. Uh, People really have to explain themselves, and not to the interviewer or the filmmaker, but to somebody else. And and that's what I tried to do a lot in the film. I didn't want to do myself some interviews and try to uh, let people explain themselves to me. I didn't want that. I, I said, if people have to, I have to create all these. Okay, I know there's going to be some evaluations. I know there are going to be some uh, uh, some notes. Uh, some criminologists going to meet them and stuff like that. Okay, so I was always uh, trying to uh, give them questions to the people so they could talk about what they were saying, but sometimes they were talking about what I was asking to, to talk about. So it helped me a lot to, narratively speaking, to write the, the film in, in the edit. And um, and what was I going to say about the, uh, the therapies? Something, I, I thought about going there, but you know, the first time the therapists, they were not really open to talk to the group, to know if they were interested to having me there uh, to film it. But it's the uh, it's Samuel, the character, who asked the therapist, said, "Oh, that would help me if my film crew." <laughs> he was he was calling us his film crew, and uh, you know it's a character I loved uh, being filmed. Yeah. And uh, he was he he told this therapist, ah, that would help me in my process if the film crew could be there and be uh, uh, a, a testimony to be a witness of of, uh, of what I'm going through." And then they said yes, and that's how. Uh, I, could be yeah, able to I go guess uh, he can't be proven wrong. <laughs> no, exactly, exactly. Yeah, the therapist told me like um, because they met more characters that I were fil I was filming in the factory, and he said, "Oh, your camera was um, much more useful than we thought." And he, he was like, L "Lots of people uh, were staying uh, straight in their um, rehabilitation process because you were there and." They they liked seeing you guys, and because we were a small crew, two or three, depending on the days of shooting. Sometimes I was going alone too, and but they always loved to see us because we were going like, for a whole year, about once a week in this factory, and people were like getting used to us. You know, when we started, they were like, "Oh, who are these uh, camera people?" And but after like three weeks, they were like, "Hey, come and talk to me," and you know, we were part of this place and all this. Um, Promotional year of people doing this project. Yeah. Yeah. 
Thank you. And um, um, seeing all the post-its behind you, uh, I guess yeah. you're on your new project. Do you want yes. to tell us something about it? Uh, it's, a, it's, a, it's, a, it's another very local story. It's, uh, we just had uh, the, the financing to, to write the this, uh, this scenario, to, to develop the film. Uh, and it's called uh, Papakasi. And Papakasi is an Inu word. Inu is uh, one of the uh, First Nations um, community here in Quebec. And it means uh, caribou. Uh, you know, it's like a very, uh, it's a very important animal. It's on, it's on the Canadian money and, you know. Yep. And there's um, one type of caribou that is going to disappear in a couple of years. And the film is about, uh, we're, uh, we're following some Inu people that stopped hunting it to protect it. And now they work with drones and they try to count them and they try to corroborate what are the ancestors' knowledge. And they try to document it with technology and like study it and they do it with the government. So it's pretty interesting to, it's, it's like a scientific road trip mixed with uh, an anthropologic movie. So, and, and that's oh, it. Maybe, I think it's gonna uh, be, uh, Maybe we have done the chance to see you in Munich. Uh, yeah, yeah. <laughs> after <laughs> that would be great. all the uh, I loved it. Yeah, I'd love me. to be there. Yeah, thank you very much for your film. Uh, and um, good luck because your uh, film you. is also nominated for the Kino Kino Audience Award. Okay. Und, um, liebe Gäste, wie gesagt, um, the free ones is, wenn der Film euch gefallen hat, ich denke, Bitte stimmt ab für ihn, für den Kino Kino Publikumspreis, der von, vom Bayerischen Rundfunk und von Dreisat gestiftet ist. Und ja, alle Informationen dazu findet ihr auf unserer Webseite. Und ich sage vielen Dank, vielen Dank Nicola, thank you very much.